how to actually give them tasks to make sure that things don't fall through the cracks, to make sure that they actually understand it, and there's that space for them to be able to ask questions and give feedback as needed as they go through the task. Hey there, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, my goal set at this video is to walk you through the process of how to delegate tasks effectively to your virtual assistant. Now, if this is your first time on my channel, my name is Thea Nakaba. I've been working from home since I was 15 years old and now run my own virtual assistant agency here in the Philippines. And I post videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to have a business from home. So make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos. Now, one of the things that can be either a little bit confusing or you don't know where to start is delegating tasks. Now that you probably have a virtual assistant, how do you actually give them tasks to make sure that things don't fall through the cracks, to make sure that they actually understand it, and there's that space for them to be able to ask questions and give feedback as needed as they go through the task. Now, one of the first things that you'll need is having a clear list of roles and responsibilities for your virtual assistant as they get started working with you. This will serve as a guide for you and your assistant to know what are they expected to be able to do and for you to make it easy for you in your head or like, oh yeah, someone else is going to be taking care of this. One of the things that usually is just a little bit hard to let go of when you start with a virtual assistant are the things that you are currently doing. These are things that you are doing day to day that you think like, oh, it'll be easier. I just did it myself. I don't have to delegate it, but with a clear roles and responsibilities list, it'll be easier to you to get things out of your head. Now, if you don't have any idea yet on what tasks that you can give to an assistant, I do have a whole video on how to assess yourself on the tasks that you're doing so you know, again, what to give to your assistant. Next is to make sure that as you're going through the list of roles and responsibilities is if there are any changes to make sure that you discuss this with your virtual assistant to make sure that you guys have a good back and forth of like, oh, I know I said that I wanted you really to focus on my social media but you've gotten really amazing at doing my admin let's update your list of roles and responsibilities that way both of you guys are accountable and again there's that clear expectation between the two of you on what they should be focusing on or doing next is to start creating and basically just strategizing what is their growth plan in your business would they just be doing your executive assistant work in the long run would they be taking over different responsibilities inside of your business as it starts growing just start thinking of ways that they're going to start growing in your business that way again it makes it easier for you to start thinking and delegating tasks to them. This also gives them something to look forward to in your business as they keep getting more and more skills, more and more responsibilities. They know that there is a pathway for them to get to eventually. Next thing that really is crucial when it comes to delegating tasks is creating a task list. Now I have a bunch of videos on how to create a task list with your virtual assistant and how to plan your day with a virtual assistant. But what this is basically is, is just a way for you guys to capture all of the things that you guys are currently working on or doing so things don't fall through the cracks. So the to-do list could be super duper simple of just to do, doing, done, and then having an archive so the, the done pile doesn't get too long. Or it could be, you know, to do, priority one, priority two, these kind of things. It's really up to you on what is best for you and your business and with your assistant on what works and this could shift a lot in the next couple of months in the next couple of years of what your task list will look like but it's essential that you have one as basically a communication tool and a way for you to add tasks remove tasks reprioritize things with them it's an easy thing to look over again it doesn't have to be super complicated it could be very just straightforward it's just the to-do list that you guys both share so you guys can track things as they go through their system next is now the actual delegation system so for us with my clients in 2xu we can of work it out it's one of the props basically as they're getting started with their assistant is what is the best way that you can delegate tasks to them one is by audio audio is basically sending them a voice recording doing and using otter basically as a way for you to start dumping out tasks to them there could also just be sending them videos so using tools like loom or vidyard to be able to send them like hey i want you to do this so then it's more visual they can see the step-by-step -step process it used to be whenever i delegated tasks to my assistant we had a 
an actual dedicated chat on WhatsApp just for delegating tasks. I called it just brain dump. So then this was a way for me that I can easily have a shortcut on my phone that anytime that I wanted to give her a task over text or I would do a voice message on WhatsApp, it's just all there. So the purpose of this is to make sure again that things don't fall through the cracks. There's something that you guys can review later on of like, hey, did you add this to your to-do list? Which we'll go through in a little bit. But it's a way for you guys to be able to just see the history of the tasks being given so sometimes you know we thought that we gave a task away but we actually never was able to get to it so then it's just again a clear way to accountability back and forth and also it's just a documentation in its own way so pick a system to start off the delegation of like okay what's the mode of communication that i will give tasks to you and having a good channel where you guys can again check back and forth okay this is when this task was given you know why wasn't it done or wow you did it actually within like 12 hours of me giving it to you so it's just a way for you guys to have that history of when tasks were given and what tasks were given when. Next is what we call the WOW method. So the WOW method is just one of the ways that for us, when we teach this to our clients, help give a lot of context for their assistant. So this is sometimes one of the ways that why tasks never get done is the assistant doesn't have enough context to go off of. So the WOW system is just an easy way to remember things. Now, WOW basically is why, outcome, and who. Basically, an easy way to think about it is why is this task important? Why is this a task that's being given? Basically, again, context. Outcome is, of course, how do you want this to look like in the end? You know, it's basically just a what of like, what is this task about? What is it supposed to look like when it's done? And then the who is who's involved in it. So either it's going to be just your assistant, they're the owner for this task, or there's a list of other people that they need to contact, which when you're delegating your email or your calendar, it's going to be an essential part for them to, again, have full context of what this task is about. And basically, once you've given them that context, when you give them that voice message, the next part is basically making sure that they actually capture it in that task list. That Again, this is why it's important to have the task list already because then once they get the other WhatsApp message, you know, voice recording that you gave them or a video, there's a way for them to put it all into one place. So again, you can see and you can trust that that work is going to get done. Next is once you have done that a couple of times, is making sure that your, that your virtual assistant actually updates the system that you guys are using for the task. So what this basically means is making sure that they create standard operating procedures on how they do certain tasks. That way they can be easily repeatable in the future. If it's not documented, it can't be repeatable. So they have to make sure that after they get a task and they've done it a couple times is to make sure to create that standard operating procedure or that checklist that they can now check moving forward anytime that they're given that task over and over again. Now I'm going to give two examples of how to delegate two important things in your business as you're getting started with your virtual assistant. Now the first one is your email management. How do you effectively delegate email management to your virtual assistant? Well, there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. One is making sure that it's part of the recurring task. So going back to the list of what we just went through is making sure that it's part of their roles and responsibilities, making sure it's part of their actual task list of recurring tasks. So, so earlier I made an example of like what a task list can look like. It'd be to do, doing, done. It could also have be to do, recurring, doing and then done. So it's making sure that any daily, weekly, monthly tasks that they have is also captured. So for example, email management is a really good example of that because that's something that they do twice a day, once a day. And to be able to delegate that effectively, using the wow system. So the wow system is making sure that they have the why, why it's important for them to clean up your email, the outcome of like making sure that they either create drafts of the responses or forward things to you, whatever that would look like. And then the who is like, who is this email from? Why is this person important? So that kind of part of the context. So when it comes to delegating your email more effectively, but if you guys want me to do a deeper video on this, I'd be more than happy to let me know in the comments. But it's basically the process of one, giving them the login to your email, or it could be that you're out of forwarding emails to them that you want them to clean up and forward like, hey, I think you should look at this email. When it comes to our clients, usually the giving them the access to email can be very scary, especially if you're using that email for a lot of logins, but it's also just one of the easiest ways that they can clean up your email in that way. And there's different privacy settings that you can set up. There's also just separating certain kinds of emails to give them, like creating them their own like executive assistant at yourcompany.com. So there's different ways, but that's the easiest one is giving them access 
access or using tools like Spark to be able to send emails into one place if you have multiple emails. And then once you have that, it's then teaching, live teaching your assistant how you do it. So again, on the delegation, you've chosen kind of video to show them step by step like, okay, these are important, these aren't, these ones you can start creating a draft, these are templates that you can use, and then I say yes to sending them out. So it's basically just a way for them to clean your calendar and for them to know, again, what's important, what's not, you're giving them context by teaching them this way. Another example of a task that you can delegate is your calendar management. When it comes to delegating your calendar management, again, making sure it's your roles and responsibilities, making sure that it's on their task list, recurring task list, and then again, giving them that wow context. So again, it's making sure that they understand why it's important for them to maintain your calendar. And then the outcome, which is making sure that people have the right information, things are booked at the right time, you know, making sure that the description is filled out, the right Zoom room, and then the who is like the different people that you'll be meeting. Again, another best way that you can delegate this is by just doing a Zoom call or a video explanation. Okay, these are my recurring meetings. This is why they're important. You know, from time to time, I'll ask you to schedule these people out, you know, or I'll ask you like, hey, can you move around my calendar because I'm going on vacation so again it's sticking to that wow framework and that making sure again rules and responsibilities task list and then the wow then having that delegation system so they can capture it as you keep giving them tasks moving forward and again make sure that they capture the system on how you do both tasks whether the email or the calendar as an SOP so they can do it over and over again and if again if you guys want me to do a deeper dive on any of the tasks on how to delegate them feel free to comment below. And if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button right there to let me know that you guys want more of this kind of content. And if you still haven't yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to have a business from home. Which you guys can check out those two playlists right here and the latest video right here. And I hope you guys have an awesome day. Remember that small steps matters. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.